Hey guys, today I'm just going to share my experience with elevation changes and some conditions that I have called intracranial hypertension and Chiari malformation. So intracranial hypertension is basically a condition where the cerebrospinal fluid pressure within your skull is much too high and Chiari malformation is a condition where the bottom of your brain dips down into your spinal canal blocking off spinal fluid flow and so these two conditions are known to be associated with each other it's not uncommon for people to have both intracranial hypertension and Chiari malformation um, but they can stand independent of each other but both of these conditions are known to be affected by barometric pressure and the reason that these conditions are affected by barometric pressure is because when the barometric pressure drops your intracranial pressure actually rises something i forgot to mention is that when people travel to really high elevations or hike to really high elevations they often get something called elevation sickness and that's basically like what people with intracranial hypertension feel like all the time. Um, they often give them a medication called uh, Diamox, which is a medication also used to treat intracranial hypertension and it helps to bring your intracranial pressure down. And so sometimes that can relieve symptoms of elevation sickness and symptoms of high intracranial pressure. It just shows that, you know, the tolerance level is just different, so most people wouldn't get sick um, until, you know, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 feet. For someone with intracranial hypertension, they could experience significant increase in symptoms in just a couple thousand feet. Um, so, yeah. High elevations have really affected my symptoms with intracranial hypertension and um, the reason that I know that is because I actually lived in a place that was about 5,000 feet high above sea level. As my condition worsened and progressed um, we really started to notice that being at, at the high elevation that we were really was affecting my symptoms and at the time that we were living at this high elevation, I was having to do a lot of medical travel <coughs> because unfortunately there weren't um, good doctors in the area I was in to treat the conditions that I was dealing with. And so when I would travel back to um, this higher elevation, I would always notice a significant increase in my intracranial hypertension related symptoms. And so for me, that was severe pressure headaches, it was, um, I would get these seizure-like episodes when laying down or trying to sleep at night and basically all my limbs would flail uncontrollably um, and this would happen over and over and over again and a lot of the time would keep me up all night and those seizure-like episodes would um, be accompanied by a lot of severe nerve pain in my limbs um, and as we were continuing to do this medical travel and um, going back and forth, it kind of felt like each time we came back it would be worse and worse. Um, and my health um, at a certain point was kind of at its lowest and uh, I was having trouble walking. Um, my limbs, my legs would um, go weak and we noticed a correlation in um, and that being worse when we would come to the higher elevation. So it would be worse if there was a thunderstorm going on, which is kind of similar to um, high elevation where the barometric pressure drops and your intracranial pressure rises. And so I know a lot of people with intracranial hypertension at Chiari notice that they have worsened symptoms when storms and weather changes happen. And that's kind of the theory as to why that's the case. But for me, it came to a point where it was just really not tolerable for me to be living at a higher elevation. I was so, so sick. And um, so we made the decision to move to a low elevation in um, North Carolina where my family is. 
it has made a huge difference. I have gotten to the point where I only very rarely have these seizure-like episodes. Um, I'm able to get a little bit of sleep at night versus none at all and being up all night in very severe pain and having these awful and very exhausting episodes every day, all night. Um, and I am also walking better. It's more rare that I have these like leg breakaway weakness episodes um, now that we're living at this lower elevation. Um, so <laughs> it's been a bit safer for me to walk around the house and um, that sort of thing. Other symptoms that kind of can be worsened and go along with intracranial hypertension and or Chiari are um, ringing and whooshing in the ears, nausea, um, sensitivity to light and to sound, vertigo, dizziness, vision loss, double vision. I actually have another friend who has very severe intracranial hypertension and was also living in the same state that we were living in and her family has also decided to make the move to a lower elevation just because of how it affects symptoms. Um, and I, I'm still a part of a Facebook group um, for Utah and Kiari and I've noticed that people often do talk about how they feel better when they visit a lower elevation and they tend to feel worse when they visit a high elevation. Um, this is definitely the majority of patients but there are some people that do feel better at a higher elevation and this may be if somebody with Chiari has something called a cerebrospinal fluid leak where their intracranial pressure is actually too low and so that drop in barometric pressure and raise in intracranial pre pressure for those people would actually be a positive thing. Um, and everybody's different. There are people who have intracranial hypertension at Chiari who are not affected by elevation changes. But I just wanted to share this because I know there, there isn't a lot of information out there on intracranial hypertension in Chiari and elevation changes and weather changes. Um, just so that you know you're not the only one if this is what you're experiencing. I've had some doctors who have said there's no way that could ch change your symptoms and then I've seen specialists for intracranial hypertension and Chiari who say yes, like absolutely. Um, that's the vast majority of patients that deal with this condition that have worsened symptoms when they go to a higher elevation or when thunderstorms come around. And as much as I love the mountains and love um, being at higher elevation, um, I'm very thankful that we were able to find some relief in my symptoms. Obviously, they've not all gone away and unfortunately I'm still dealing with a lot of symptoms that do significantly impact my quality of life, but every little improvement helps and for me this was a big improvement to come to a lower elevation and so we're thankful for that and I'm just curious if any of you guys watching this if you have intracranial hypertension or Chiari if you experience worsened symptoms when going to higher elevations or during thunderstorms, let me know in the comments below. That's it for this video. If you guys would like to continue following along on my journey, then be sure to click subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.